Hello, everyone, and welcome to Uncivil Law. For today's case, we have a decision from the Court of Appeals for the Tenth Circuit coming out of Colorado. This is the case of Roger Hill versus Mark Everest Wasowo and the state of Colorado. In this case, there is a dispute over fishing rights on a river. Someone wants to fish on this river and someone else claims it's private property. And so the question is, who is right? What state law applies? What federal law applies? And so forth. So we're going to read the facts of this case and read the decision as it goes. So let's get started with this. Mr. Hill believes that he, as a member of the public, has the right to fish at the disputed segment of the Arkansas River. The dispute over title has led to conflict between Mr. Hill and landowners. Mr. Hill alleges that landowners have sought to exclude him from the property by chasing him off by force and threats of force, throwing rocks at him, threatening legal action, and shooting a gun at one of his friends. You know, I, I think that shooting a gun at one of your friends is, is a bit much, you know, for someone fishing. You know, if you want to threaten them with legal action, that's totally fine. If you want to call the police and try to have them arrested, okay. But, you know, probably shouldn't be shooting at people merely for fishing peacefully on the river, even if you think you own that piece of the riverbank. So, legal advice to the wise, don't shoot at people just trying to fish. Let's carry on. The landowners contend that they own a riverbed and are within their rights to exclude Mr. Hill. They claim the change of record for title for the land originates with a federal grant and that the only private owners are within that chain. So this would be typical for much of the Western states. You know, in the beginning, uh, America owned all the land that wasn't settled. And in the beginning, that was quite a lot of land. So the land in what would be eventually Colorado all started out as federal land. And the way that this became private is the federal land be was transferred to private entities through a variety of means, uh, up to and including people just literally building a home and laying a claim and it became theirs. So it was federal property and at some point transferred to private property. So the idea is we can show a continuous chain of title all the way from the, when it was a federal land up to the current day. And because of that, it's private. So that kind of makes sense. Let's carry on. Below, Mr. Hill alleged facts in support of his navigability claim. Colorado was admitted to a state in 1876. Mr. Hill alleges that fur trappers used the Arkansas River to transport goods prior to that date. He also asserts that contemporaneous newspaper reports describe commercial use of the rivers to float logs and railroad ties downstream. So the idea here is that these are navigatable waters. And therefore, that comes with certain rights to people to use to navigate them. So even if you use the land, own the land, you don't own the river itself because the navigatable river claim, as opposed to non-navigatable rivers, which might be privately owned. Navigatable rivers are, are covered by different aspects of law. So here he's saying, well, this is a navigatable river. People have been using it for these various purposes, including sending commerce. And so I can stand on the riverbed and fish. That's the claim. Mr. Hill first filed an action in the district court. The landowners defaulted in that action while Colorado moved to intervene and asked the district court to dismiss on 11th Amendment grounds, which would be appropriate if it's a state entity that's being sued. Before that motion was resolved, Mr. Hill moved for and was granted voluntary dismissal of his action. Okay, fine. So the, the federal case is then over. Mr. Hill then filed substantially the same action in a Colorado state court. Colorado was named as an interested party and later appeared in the action. The landowners appeared and removed the action to district court on the basis of federal question jurisdiction. So that makes sense, right? Because the navigatable waters things is a question of federal law. Federal, federal law governs navigatable waters. And so the rules that would typically apply are federal, not state, even though they're, they're wholly contained in the state. And so to the degree that we're talking about navigatable waters, it's a federal question. And if it's a federal question, you can, what's called removing it, which is just the process from taking it from state court to federal court. You're just transferring it, but they call it removal. So let's read on. Mr. Hill also added Colorado as a named defendant in the federal action. Both the landowner appellees and Colorado moved to dismiss alleging defects in constitutional and prudential standing and failure to state a claim. 
Mr. Hill responded with various motions of his own, moving for remand for a lack of subject matter jurisdiction, asking the court to stay consideration of opposing motions until resolution of his motion on remand, and moving to certify questions of the nature of Colorado's title to the Colorado Supreme Court. The district court declined to stay the consideration and resolved the remaining motions. On appeal, Mr. Hill argues the district court erred by finding that he lacked prudential standing to bring his claims. Because we agree and conclude other errors require remand, we do not reach the other contentions. So the district court concluded in part that he did not have standing to bring his claim, and he appealed that action. And the court of appeals says no, there's, he has standing, so you have to consider some of his stuff, and therefore they don't reach the other merits of the claim because the trial court had never had the ability to consider them in the first instance. So let's read on and see what we might expect to happen. The Wilderness Society asserted a general interest in conservation of freedom from recreational or aesthetic injury in a different case. By contrast, Mr. Hill is asserting that he has the right to fish. The fact that resolving the dispute requires determining whether this segment of the Arkansas River was navigable in 1876 and therefore titled to state by operation of law does not er erase the fact that Mr. Hill is claiming a right in himself. As an example, we examined in the case Wilderness Society, then that's instructive here. In a panel decision, Judge McConnell's dissent posed the following hypothetical. Imagine my next door neighbor who keeps his property neat and tidy, is faced with a competing claim to the land, who is likely to allow the property to fill with weeds. I would might very much hope my neighbor wins. My property values and aesthetic interests could be seriously affected. I may be impatient with my neighbor's inclination towards compromise and apparent disinclination to go to court, but no one would say I have standing to sue in defense of my neighbor's property rights. The wilderness society is in precisely that situation. Mr. Hill finds himself in a different situation than the prior case. He is more like the purported holder of an easement he alleges was granted by a competing claimant than a neighbor who fears aesthetic harm from lack of upkeep. In this hypothetical, determining whether Mr. Hill has any right to use by easement will require an examination of the underlying title. It makes little sense to deny Mr. Hill prudentially standing to determine his rights in the easement because of existence of a dispute on the underlying property owners. The right he asserts is his own, even if it exists by the actions of another. So here, if you want to use property held by another in some way, one of the typical ways this happens is by easement. And there's different kinds of easements. Uh, easements can be granted as part of a deed or title, in which case you would say it's easement by prescription. Um, it can be given by a court if it's the only way to access a different piece of land. So if you have land that is uh, completely surrounded by other pieces of land and you need, need to be able to get to it, um, that would be considered an easement by necessity because it's the only way to get to your land. So you can cross someone else's land to get to it. And there's also easements that occur from long use. So if, if people, uh, what this has happened a lot in like beach access cases. So you'll see a case where the public at large has used a particular path for a substantial period of time. And then a property owner uh, puts a fence around the land and tries to gate it off so people won't use it anymore. So it's not by, uh, not by grant because the landowner nor his predecessors granted it explicitly. It's not by necessity because you don't have to cross this particular piece of land to get to the beach. You could cross somewhere else. But it's by long-term use. So it's, it's by um, constructive use. So that's kind of what we're talking about here, right? So this is this is a piece of property. This is a piece of private property, the title of which is into a, a private use. And what Mr. Hill is claiming here is an easement. He has a right. He argues to use the piece of land for the purposes of fishing, even though it's owned by someone else. And so that's your easement analysis. And presumably, it would be because of easement um, by uh, constructive use that members of the public for such a long period of time have used this piece of land in common for various things that even though it's not necessary, even though it's not um, being done as a matter of giving it, that even though he would still have the easement. So that's the kind of argument that you would normally see in property law uh, is, is that kind of analysis. And that's the argument that he's essentially trying to make. And he's saying, look, the reason I have easement in this is because of what other people have done, which is perfectly reasonable. 
He may very well have an easement, not because of what he did, but because of what other people have done, especially if you're talking about continuous use. You wouldn't look to what he did. That doesn't make any sense. You'd look to what people over a range of time have done. So he is saying, well, the court below is saying, well, you can't bring this claim because you can't establish the easement yourself. But the Court of Appeals is saying, quite rightly, in my opinion, that that's not the right issue. The right issue is, among other things, whether people in 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 gross have been using this in a particular way that there is an easement as a matter of long-term use. And so even though this right would have been created by others, he has an arguable claim to this right. Now, whether or not that's true, whether or not there is an easement is of course a whole nother set of issues. You know, so he have to prove a whole bunch of things, but that's the issue of standing. Does he have the right to argue the issue? Can he go back to the trial court and say, I have an easement because of various things that have occurred because of various federal statutes and so forth. And so that's the operative question. And the appeal court of appeals is saying, well, he has at least a viable argument because there seems to be some facts here that if established could potentially lead to the easement. So send it back to trial court and figure it out. Just don't dismiss it for lack of standing. So, so far I'm on board. Mr. Hill concedes that the purported right comes to him by virtue of state title. However, Mr. Hill does not claims do not turn on the superiority of a sovereign property right. In Mr. Hill's telling, title vested in the state over a century ago because the river was navigatable for title under Article 4 and the Equal Footing Doctrine. Mr. Hill alleges that he has a specific legally protected right to fish resulting from these alleged facts and law. And by the way, I was mentioning beach access as a, as a good example, and this is also a very good example of this for, for people who want to get access to the beach itself, not just to cross someone's land, but to actually get access to the beach. And you see this a lot in like California and Hawaii as issues where people who, who own property try to claim that this entire section of beach belongs to them. And it may or may not be within the deed of their title, but this is kind of the thing that people come back at with. It's like, no, the beach has been used in common. It's been used by members of the public forever and ever. And because of that, this is held in common. It's not private property, et cetera, and so forth. So this, this idea of an easement by, by construction, by long-term use, is not really that strange. It comes up a lot in beach access cases where people are having the argument, we have the right to the beach. And the private property owner is saying, no, this is my beach and my beach alone. So these are the same kind of issues. And so the, he has the claim here is that he has access to the beach, the beach of the river, and he has access to it for the same reason that other people have access to beaches, because he can use it for the same reasons a member of the public does. So it's, it's the same kind of argument you see in beach access cases. So it doesn't strike me as a weird argument. How it should come out, I don't know, but it's it seems perfectly normal in its in its construction. The other parties and amici may ultimately be correct that Colorado law does not actually afford Mr. Hill the right to fish he asserts, even if he can prove navigability as a factual matter. But in this regard, far-fetchedness is a question to be determined on the merits. We assume that Mr. Hill's claim has legal validity and conclude he asserts his own rights, not those of Colorado, for prudential standing purposes. The district court erred by concluding that Mr. Hill lacked prudential standing to bring his claims. We take no position on whether Mr. Hill has demonstrated constitutional standing and we do not reach any of the merits issues presented by this case. We therefore reverse the judgment of the district court and remand the case for further proceedings. And that is the end of the case of Roger Hill versus landowners and the state of Colorado. In this case, we learned that Mr. Hill wants to fish and he wants to fish from a piece of river. However, landowners claim it's their piece of river and he can't use it. And they've claimed this to the point where they're apparently shooting at his friends and such, which again is not a good idea. Uh, the district court dismissed this for lack of prudential standing, arguing that he was not raising his own claims, only those of another, and so he couldn't bring suit. But the court of appeals disagrees, and I think they disagree properly. He is arguing his rights. It's his right to use this piece of land. That other people establish that right is neither here nor there. It still is a right that he has access to, and so he has prudential standing. And so he can go back and sue over these issues as to whether or not this is title vested in the state, whether or not there's easements by prescription, easements by convention, easements by other means, and argue whether or not he has access to this land for fishing 
in part of in common. So there's a lot of factual issues and legal issues as it relates to easements, particularly as it relates to easements because those are state law specific. So you'd have to look to Colorado state law specifically as it relates to easements. You know, what I've been saying is, is principles in general. So you actually have to look to the specific case laws that relates to easements in Colorado to determine whether or not he can fit any, into any of these available buckets or not. And so he has to go back to trial court and he has to say, well, according to state law, here are the available things that might apply. Here are the facts and here's why I think they apply. And then go argue about that and we will see what happens next. Thank you for joining me as we both read this case together and now better understand the law. If you're enjoying this legal education content, please subscribe to this channel. It really helps us grow. And check out one of our other videos, including the one that's currently being displayed on the thumbnail on screen. Thank you so much for your continued support. And until later, my friends, cheers and goodbye.